everybody. Welcome back to 12 Foot Chain. We received some sad news this week that we lost the great Charlie Watts, the drummer for the Rolling Stones. Um, just a, what a legacy he left and what a mark in the music world and um, from all accounts, just what a great man. And um, so today, uh, in his honor, even though we're, uh, we're a guitar-focused channel here today, I wanted to do a semi-tribute to Charlie with the song Honky Talk Women. Um, and uh, just because his drumming in that is fantastic. Um, and uh, so I'm going to do my, uh, my best to honor the band and Charlie with my lesson on the song. And um, you can click right here and see the full cover version that I did illustrating all the lessons that I'm going to go over right here. And it has Charlie's drums. It actually has Bill Wyman's bass on it, so so I'll be sure to get a copyright hit on that. So you know what? Today is a great day. You know why today is a great day? Because today you are going to learn how to play Honky Tonk Women the way that you hear it on the record. I'm going to cover Keith's parts, the great rhythm part that runs throughout the whole song, which a lot of people focus on on lessons that you see on YouTube. I'll do that too, but I'm also going to break down the harmonizing lead guitars that happen um, intermittently through the song um, in the guitar solo section and um, in the outro as well, which is also great work. And actually a lot of controversy on the web of who's playing what. I've done a little research. I think I can give you some guidance on that. Okay, so let's talk about um, the rhythm section, rhythm guitar section. All right, as many of you know, um, Keith Richards plays this, and he plays it in open G. Um, I don't know at this time if he was enamored of taking off, removing the sixth string. You know, later on he did that. He actually only played with five strings. Um, I have a feeling that he's not there yet, and I think he's playing a Les Paul on this one. Um, I'm not sure. He hasn't settled into his Telecaster era yet. I know that. And you know, this is the, one of the first great songs that actually sounds like that golden era of the Stones that we know them. This, this is from the Let It Bleed album sessions. There's another, there's a lot of other great songs on that album. Check out my video on uh, Monkey Man as well, if you're curious. Uh, but this one actually is squarely putting you on notice that Keith Richards is gonna explore the open G tuning for the next 10, 20, 30, 50, whatever years, um, and live in that space. And this, I think, is, if not the first, one of the first where that's really clear and laid out. Okay, so it's an open G tuning. And I can't, I don't think it's actually technically in G. I think it's a little sharp of G um, when you play with the record. But we won't worry about that. Here's the, if you wanna sound like the record, here's your strings. D, G, D, G, B, and D, okay? So find those, go ahead and tune to that, um, and we'll get started. Okay, as far as tone goes, bridge pickup, I've got my volume around, backed off around seven, seven or eight. Um, there's a slapback echo on this. You want one repeat, and I don't know what the millisecond is on that. It's whatever that is. That's as close to my ear that I can get it. And you want the slapback to be about the same, almost the same volume as the regular um, dry signal. I also have a, a, a little bit of overdrive on there. I'm using a TS9 Tube Screamer, and it's set at about 12 o'clock, actually. Um, so volume and tone are right at about 12 o'clock and uh, sorry volume and drive are right about 12 o'clock and the tone knob is right at about 2 o'clock. Um, I also have a setting on my EQ pedal um, which helps boost a little bit in the areas that I thought was lacking to really hit that sound um, and here's a picture of those settings. Okay. So that's the sound. Now let's talk about the parts. So Keith 
to my ear is playing this with fingers. And I think he's playing with fingers. Um, there's some obvious parts where he's playing it with fingers because there's a lot of picking two strings at once. Um, and uh, there's a video where you can see him even later playing um, in this tuning, playing live. And I think he's playing with his fingers as well. I'll link that here. Okay, so let's talk about the great iconic opening of the song, right? So the drums kick in and the, or the cowbell kicks it off, drums kick in, great groove. Um, and on guitar, what you hear is this. It's the D and the G string. Um, and you want to be very sort of staccato with it because you want to get that groove. Mm, uh, uh, uh. And every time you hit it, you get a little bit of that slap back on there. Don't hit the low one yet. Don't hit that one yet. It's not that. It's... All right. So remember, we're going to be using our fingers. We're not going to be playing. I think for the entire Keith portion of the rhythm, I think that's all finger picked. Um, so we're on the G and the, you know, the third and the first string. And so that's a chord, right? Because we've retuned our guitar. So that's a G and a D. So that's a fifth right there. So you're going to take your middle finger on uh, two on your third string and you're going to slide it up to four. Right? And then back down. And you, you could bend it. <laughs> oh, you could. If you wanted to. You're taking your middle finger on two and you're sliding up to four at the same time you're picking the open first string. So. Up and down. So the, the, your, your thumb and your middle finger is doing this. Right? And your index finger is... So that's your riff. And so, uh, after you're coming on the riff, um, on the verse section now, back to that. Right? I'm just going to go through each one of these parts slowly. Now we're up here on our C. So we're just playing a couple, the, again, the fourth and the third string. So again, that first part is... First suspension. Um, many of you know the Keith, the standard sort of Keith chord suspension where you have you bar over and you're hammering on and off both the two frets up on the fourth string and one fret up on the second string. Right, that's a million Rolling Stones songs right there. In this case, on the record, he's starting that, he gets to that, but later. But he's starting on that first one, it's it's just that top part of it. Alright, so then after your C and your suspension C, you're going to be playing again back to your third and first string, pinching. Um, and the riff goes like this. Now the timing is what's a little funky on that one. Um, and it oscillates throughout the song. So I'm gonna show you know very close the timing and the riffs as they are on the record. Um, but as long as you're getting close on that and close on the timing with these, um, and you're playing in this open tuning, you're, you're gonna nail it and it's gonna sound fantastic. So um, again, that whole part
to the A now. And now we get the standard key Keith uh, suspension. So we're on the, on the second fret. And then resolve to the D up here on seven. And there you can do both. And then here's how we get back to the G. You're gonna be, we're gonna be playing with the fifth string and the third string. And there's that great way that that note sounds on the record where it's like, wow. I think he just hits that string really hard, but it almost sounds like it's a tape warble, um, but it's great. So you hit it hard, but not too hard. You don't wanna pull it sharp. But uh, yeah, you're gonna land on that fifth string open. Right, then back to. Now, those and the timing that I just played that may or may not be totally dead on, um, but it's more important that you get sort of the positions and the feel, right? So this song is in G. The chords that you're playing around with for the whole thing is based on the G, based on the C at five, based on the D at seven, and based on the A at two, right? I think those are the only four chords in the song. Um, and um, so, Let's run through that whole intro together. you get that strong open G. Um, you're going to go back to you're going to end on your D here and then we're going to switch to something real quick. It sort of goes by you really quick on the record but he hits a harmonic, a couple of harmonics. Again, it's like you hear that and I guess and you're like oh yeah I guess I did hear that like at least for me like oh yeah I guess I did hear that but I would never think that that was there when you listen to it um, on the record but that's what happens he only does it on the on the first of the close of the first verse he hits that B note just open just a little bit so let me play that one time through leading up to that and then he leads into that really cool rhythm section. We're sticking with Keith's rhythm, Keith's rhythm part. So now we're on the G, and what he's doing here is very understated. It's very cool. Um, he's doing kind of a, he's doing this. And I can't tell if it's, if it's just open chord. He's going back and forth with the, the suspension. I kind of think he's not, but I've seen tutorials where they're saying he does. If you do it or you don't, it's going to sound great, but the most important part is to get that. That feel, with that slap back going on. So now we're at the chorus. Uh -huh. 
right? So it's G to D. And then he comes in strong after woman. So again, the chorus is G to D, and uh, after the lyric, Honky Tonk Women, So that's the whole figure for sort of the verse section. Second verse, it's basically the same. The timing of some of those riffs and how they land is a little bit different, um, but those are all the same chords. It's the same sort of uh, riffs that he's doing there. So um, play around with that. Um, one of the differences uh, on the first time when he did that um, ending on that fifth string really hard, the second time he actually keeps the the third string on so it's more like um, and then just the normal sort of variations that you would naturally do off of those chords uh, it's gonna sound fantastic during the solo he's doing the same thing he's just basically playing a, a verse chord progression for the rhythm running through that whole thing um, and uh, after that after that second chorus it's just sort of vamping on the chorus a little bit um, so he's doing throughout the whole part uh, and that repeating chorus all the way out he's doing the normal chorus part <laughs> different than what they did at the very beginning but that's the that's what you want to hit at the end and you want to be very staccato with it dun, 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 dun. you're matching Charlie's hits on the drums there you go so summing up the rhythm G open G tuning get that slap back echo on it bridge pickup um, don't hit it wide open with your volume. Give yourself some space, seven or eight. Um, get a little bit of overdrive on there. And um, that's going to nail the rhythm tone. Now let's talk about the lead tones. There's two harmonizing guitars that play the sort of lead guitar sections. One of those guitars is in open G. Um, and I believe it is Keith playing that. The other guitar, I believe, is in standard tuning, and it's possible that that's Mick Taylor. It's really hard to get good information about that. Um, I'm pretty confident the open G tuning guitar is Keith playing that, because when you see them play it live in that sort of era, that early area, and I'll, and I'll link a video here that demonstrates that, um, you can see play, uh, Keith doing this first riff that I'm going to talk about. Um, and he also plays the guitar solo live, too. I always thought that was Mick Taylor, but I don't think that's Mick Taylor playing the solo on the record, and I'll show you that um, when we get to that part, too. So there's two lead guitars playing harmonizing parts. Uh, as I said, the first one is in open G tuning, and um, you're coming up here to 12, and uh, you know that the we're playing in the G major pentatonic kind of feel. Um, 
Now, because our, our, our first string is tuned down to a D, so it's basically two frets down from what it normally would be, um, if you were to do this major G major pentatonic bend and you know riff that you normally know where you you bend up from 14 to you know to 16 on the G string and you hit the 12th fret on the first string normally that would sound like this right but now because you've tuned the string down it's a little bit different but what you hear on the record is this hear a lot of that um, and so you have to learn a new sort of finger position with your pinky that you might not be naturally used to um, if you haven't played with this tuning for a little while um, but that first part it sounds like this right so it's that part right leading up into the chorus um, right before honky-tonk women Blew my nose and then she blew my mind. It's that. Um, and then it runs through. Um, what you also hear on the isolated track, and I'll link to a great video that somebody put together that deconstructs this song, and you can hear a lot of the individual guitar parts. And you can hear a lot of the individual guitar parts too that are at different levels that they ended up being on the record, I think. Because um, there's things in here that uh, that I'm gonna play, I'm gonna show you, and you'll, you'll see it on that video. Um, but uh, I don't know that it's really apparent on the record. Um, I think the level might be pulled down, but who knows. Anyway, so the guitar that's doing that. Um, right after that, plays quietly this just right lightly behind behind the singer it's great um, and then it, and that section ends with the rhythm guitar now that you hear that we learn so it's just neat uh, to ch check out that video. Um, you hear that part. So, so that's the that's the sort of position that he's playing at on lead. I'm going to call it lead guitar number one. And um, there's just variations on that all the way through the first, you know, chorus section, and the second chorus section does the same thing. So sticking with the guitar number one, um, now when you get to the outro part of the song, which is just the repeated chorus, you're still basically vamping off of this idea. You're just, just vary it up a little bit um, each time, but you sort of do it off of that position. Um, the very, very end, he does some repeating, um, bend up, bend down, bend up, bend down, um, and then he, this guitar lead, lead guitar number one is what you hear on the very end outro. Right? So that last little part on the outro of this guitar sounds like this. So that's lead guitar number one. Um, now let's talk about lead guitar number two. All right, for lead guitar number two, I'm gonna switch guitars just to get a little bit of a different sound. I'm not sure what guitar was used um, on that. Um, it sounds to me that they could be the same guitar, which means you wonder if it's two Les Pauls, you wonder if it's two tracks of Keith Richards and there's no Mick. Um, but the credits seem to show that Mick played on the song. Um, and so I'm going to call this the Mick Taylor part or lead guitar number two part. So this is in standard tuning, about the same sound configuration. 
Um, for these, by the way, for these lead guitar parts, turn your uh, echo off. Um, these, I don't believe, have the slapback echo on it. Um, it, uh, it muddies it up a little bit. So this makes it really, really crisp and clear. Uh, okay, so we are now um, the second lead guitar coming into the chorus. So while the, I'm going to approximate what lead guitar number one did. So we just learned lead guitar number one is doing this kind of a thing. Although I'm playing it differently with the fingers. So lead guitar number two is doing this. Um, and a variation of that. The, the important part is to get that bend up. From on the second string, starting at 15 up to 17, and you're catching your pinky on 15 on the first string. And if you want to do it with fingers, either way. Um, but I think you're ending. I've seen other tutorials that say that you do this. I. I'm not hearing that note, personally. So I'm going to say that this is the part. All right. And just like the other one, you're doing subtle variations of that um, throughout. So lead guitar number one is playing their part. Lead guitar number two is playing this part in harmony with it. And it's just, it's a great interplay. Um, but uh, what's sort of helping is that both of you are bending up at about the same time to open your riffs where the first guitar is bending this up and the second guitar is bending this one up, right? So you're sort of doing that um, more or less at the same time. And um, so that's moving through the choruses. Um, on the outro, it's the same idea um, there is a part that's a little different um, that I'll call out because it really jumps out on the record. Um, so on the outro, you're starting with your... Somewhere around there. So you're repeating that. Um, at some point, you hear this... Uh, where you're sort of on that piece of a... It's like the piece of a C uh, triad on here on eight and set on uh, what is that nine and seven on the third and second string. Um, and what happens there is, uh, you, well, I'll just play it and you can hear where that is. Give it a good wiggle at the end of that. And then he sort of plays between those two notes. So that's in there on the second guitar. Um, and the second lead doesn't, I don't think he's really do anything, doing anything on the very last, you know, the riff that the other guitar is playing. So that's left alone. So where the second guitar, second lead guitar sort of pans off is um, over on that part. So if I could approximate sort of the outro part of that, it's gonna go something like this. is that deconstructed song. I'll link here again. Um, go to that deconstructed song and you can hear that um, on the first section of it. All right. And you can also see it on the demo that I have um, linked where I try and try and nail that too. Okay, let's talk about the lead, the actual lead guitar. So the lead guitar section, the actual lead, um, very cool. It's all sort of almost exclusively all in major. Um, major G pentatonic space. There's a little bit um, a variation to that, but um, 
there's these little gems in there that I never knew was there. It was sort of mixed with all of the other goodness that's happening on there. Um, so it happens at the very beginning, what's leading into the solo, and towards the very end, how you're sort of getting out of it. And I never knew it was there. So, um, and here's basically what it is. Um, so again, we're on our open G tuning. Um, our echo is off for this. All right, so the guitar solo opens with this great riff. I never knew this was there. A little hammer on. Um, you know, you sort of recognize it when you hear it like this, but it's really hard to pick out if you're listening to it on the record because all that other goodness is layered in there with it. But so here it is. It's a hammer on on G on the, or on the third string um, at nine. Pick the open first string and then land on the G note, which is the eighth fret on two. Right? Then you're sliding into the C. The chord goes to the C. Um, so you're going to part, you're going to stick in this position here, and now you're on the part of a C chord. Right? That's the major. And then now we're going to get that seventh. Because you're tuned in open G, that's your seventh. You could also do. So take your choice there. Um, so major. Back to G, and here's where he plays a little major pentatonic. Um, you're you're coming down to third, um, third, fourth, fifth fret, right? So if you would think about that as being a G chord, where you would normally play your rock and roll G pentatonic, you're an open G now. So it's a little different when you do that, right? But you're still going to do that bend and that part, um, and the way the part sounds like. Right, so it's and then slide down a fret, you're coming up to the A. Right. And you, you don't even have to hit this, you can just hit your your second fret and you're, you're doing a bar at the second fret and doing your major pentatonic bend to end on the D note. And you close that out up here, come up to, to your, what is your D chord. And you just let that trail off. So you know the major pentatonic part that's built off of this this top part of a mini D, right? We're in G, open G tuning, so that's your D chord. So he's he's just really playing off of that. He's playing that in all the different spots. to our home. C. That's how he trails off that second part of the C. And then he ends it with that opening riff again. Isn't that awesome? And then like we did with lead guitar number one. So I'll run through that uh, one time uh, slowly and one time at regular speed.
regular speed. <laughs> Just amazing. Gotta love key. All right, well, I think that about does it for Honky Tonk Women. Um, and by the way, it is Honky Tonk Women. It is actually not Honky Tonk Woman. It's those Honky Tonk Women that give me those Honky Tonk Blues. Just thought I would lay that out there. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks so much. Let us know what you think. Hey, if you haven't done so already, I really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel, if you're liking what you're seeing, and also clicking the thumbs up and the bell. It lets you know whenever we're releasing new content. Um, liking this video, if you do like it, makes a big impact. It will clue YouTube in and serve you more uh, videos like this that you do like. And uh, it'll steer away stuff that you don't like. So it actually does matter when you click that like button. It does a lot. Um, so let us know in the comments too what you think of this. Was there anything that was new here? Did you discover anything? Um, what else would you like me to take on and do coming up? Let me know. I'm going to have another lesson coming up here next week. And I'm looking for ideas. So let me know what you want to hear. And until then, everybody, take care.